wake up, the first thing that, uh, you know, when, when you go to sleep, uh, the opposite of this happens. Melatonin is secreted in your body and your brain waves start going from beta to alpha to theta to delta, which actually helps you to um, sleep. Just give me one second, okay? I think there is a, there is a problem with this. Suresh, so, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. I am not able to join from my browser. I'm actually I have actually joined from the phone, so I'm not able to see. Um, I will just try and join from. Yes, yes, please try again. Okay. Sorry, guys. So, <laughs> he, he, there is no power. I'm joined. Back. Gotcha. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. That's in the first time. It's okay. I'll just continue like this. Okay. Now, um, like I said, so when you wake up and go to this normal routine of picking up your phone, scrolling through your messages. You are so tied to your past that um, you are unable to get detached from there. And um, so when you are stressed, what happens? Your adrenal cortisol levels go so high. And when your adrenal cortisol levels go so high, um, your, your melatonin level actually goes down. When that happens, you know that you need serotonin. You, when that happens and you cannot fall asleep, Ma'am, sorry to disturb, ma'am. I request for everyone to switch off the speakers. Actually, we're not uh, able to hear you clearly. I guess because of the connectivity issue, if you can hear some of the videos. Mm -hmm. right. This is so hard. <laughs> you can, you can. That, <laughs> Just give me one second. All right, guys, let me figure it out and decide whether there is something like that. If, if you guys switch off the video now, are you able to see me? Yes, yes, what are is clear for me from the thing itself. Some of them, they may face some difficulty. Yes. Really, uh, is it okay if everyone keeps the videos on? Is it okay that way or is it the network issue from my side? No, I think it is okay from me. Okay. Right, perfect. In that case, I'll just continue, all right? Okay, guys, so I was talking about what happens uh, when you, I'm repeatedly saying this over and over again, but I'll make sure that that doesn't happen from now. So what happens when your body is stressed is, you, you know that a lot of people find uh, it very difficult to fall asleep these days. Why does that happen? It is because our body is not supposed to operate on very high stress levels constantly. So the way we have evolved as human beings, the way our body is programmed. Um, so right, so um, when we were living in the forest, we were supposed to have a fight or flight mechanism, right? So something happens, we are either, uh, either supposed to stand there and fight it or we run away from there. So when our body is constantly on this fight or flight mechanism, our body is constantly stressed. But today, in today's world, what happens is, Everything is stress for us. It's not just a bear or a lion that would come to attack us. It's it's our office. It's our boss. It's our family. Um, it's a, even from our workplace, from our from our college, everywhere we are constantly stressed. So the problem is our body is never able to switch off this fight or flight mechanism, and we are constantly operating on a stress level. So what do you? Um, so usually, so how how was it before? It was just a mechanism to stay alive. When you are stressed, your body wouldn't let you to go to sleep because when you're in a forest and you're stressed, you are stressed only because there are predators around. Around, and if you go to sleep, something is going to catch you and eat you. You're going to die that day, and that is why your body wouldn't allow you to sleep when you're stressed. Our body has evolved the same way, and even today, it's it is exactly how our body is operating. And this is what we need to become aware of. And this is how meditation um, comes into play. I'll just um, explain. Uh, okay, so before understanding how meditation works, I want you to do a breathing exercise. 
So for that, I want you all to close your eyes. I am not able to see a lot of you, but I'm just hoping that you would follow this. So just close your eyes for a minute and take a, take a normal breath, the way you breathe usually. Don't try to change anything. Just breathe in and breathe out. Continue doing that. Now I want you to focus on how you are breathing. Are you inhaling completely? Are you exhaling fully? Now follow my voice and do it according to I say. When you breathe in, make sure that your lungs are filled with air. Breathe in fully, filling your lungs with air and breathe out very slowly, expelling all the air from your body. Breathe in, fill your lungs with air and breathe out very slowly, making sure that all the air is leaving your body. You can open your eyes now. So everyone who talks about mindfulness meditation actually initially tells you to focus on your breathing. And a lot, lot of the, you know, a lot of people say that it doesn't make any sense. I, I mean, I can't, I can't focus on my breath because there are a lot of thoughts running in my body. But this is the point of focusing on your breath. The way we breathe usually, we are not even doing it properly. How sad is that? I mean, that's a shock to most of us because breathing is something that we do unconsciously, right? We, uh, we don't need to think about it. We do it all the time. But the thing is, most of us, the breathing itself is wrong. When we are breathing, we are not inhaling fully and we are not expelling all the air from our, from our body. So this is what happens. So um, when you think about how, we, when you are stressed, your, your breath, your pace of the breath quickens, right? And in our, in our normal, in our normal days, this is how we are breathing. We are not, we are not focusing on our breath. We are continuously operating on a stress mechanism. This is what I want uh, to, I want to bring your awareness to. So this much is clear. Are we ready to start now? Okay, very good. Now, the goal of meditation is just to pay attention. That is the only thing. So uh, it, when, when we say meditation, for a lot of people, it is associated with spirituality. For some, it's associated with religion. So for some, it's associated with yoga. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into that right now because uh, it's a whole different and it's a huge topic. But the basic of it, this is, this, is, this is why meditation is so important, right? Um, so when a lot of people, um, so the problem is we are not aware and we don't have, we don't pay attention. We don't know what happens in our mind most of the time. So if you actually ask someone uh, to stop for a second and tell me what you're thinking, most of them wouldn't even know because thoughts just keep on racing, just keeps on passing and we, we don't have any control over what we're thinking. And we are continuously taught that we don't have any control over this. You cannot control your mind. What happens in your mind, What it, it is what happens. You just have to accept it. But the fact is, that's not how it is. The moment you become aware, you can actually notice what is happening in your mind. And when you are, become an expert in meditation, you can actually change the way you think. You can actually take control of your thoughts. So that um, is what meditation does. Now, uh, what do we say? We actually give up. The problem is we, most of the time, our physiology, we give it up to the activity of our mind. If we are scared, we are scared, our body responds to it. If we are tired, our body responds to it. So whatever the activity that happens in our mind, our body is continuously responding to it. And the problem is we give it up to our mind also. We give our mind the complete authority to take over. If you are panicking, you, you let your body go into panic mode completely. Am I right? Can you please respond with yes or no in the chat box so that I can... Thank you so much, Yoti. Yeah. I'm waiting for a few more people to respond. So this is the idea of meditation. The idea of meditation is to take control and become aware of your thoughts. Now, um, why, do we, why do we do this? The idea is to react. Uh, I mean, to stop reacting and start responding. When something happens, um, what, what do you call a, a reaction? So someone is shouting at you. How would you, how would you react to that? 
can someone put in the chat box or can someone can uh, tell me what would you just tell me what your reaction would be some someone is coming and shouting at you if it, yeah but yeah she said get upset be thankful yeah some second has actually a thought control he said he will be thankful so this is what uh, this is what i'm trying to bring your attention to so reacting um, so anger yes so fast breathing this is but annoying all these are responses that i'm i get too tense yeah so these are the responses that i'm getting in the chat box shiver see these are physiological responses right and that is because you you don't know what's happening inside your mind that right? you give up your control go into panic mode and your body starts reacting you start reacting some people shout back some people start crying some people start uh, you know they uh, fly away from the situation so all these happens but what's up what happens when you start responding instead of reacting Response and reaction are two entirely different. When you respond, you actually are conscious about what you're doing. You're aware of what you're doing. You have the control. So meditation actually teaches you to change your reaction to response. So that much is clear. Can I have thumbs up in the chat box? If you have. If you want to actually uh, hear more about this, if you have any doubts, please put it in the chat box so that we can talk a little bit more about this. And if you are clear and if you can move on, please let me know that too. Okay, amazing. So now another thing about meditation is that, okay, perfect. Another thing about meditation is that um, we usually think that meditation that we do, it's for the 20 minutes that we do it, or the 30 minutes that we do it, it's completely wrong. That's not what meditation is about. That 30 minutes that you're sitting down for meditation, that's only your practice session. The idea of continuously meditating is to become aware for the, for the rest of your day, to have control for the rest of your day. So everything should start becoming meditative and that happens with practice. So initially it would just be the 20 minutes that we sit down for meditation. But once we uh, get up from that meditation and once we uh, start moving, we, we are out of the state, right? So 20 minutes meditation is done, we open our eyes, we are back to our stress mode. Most of the time, for some people, they are, they are able to keep it for another half an hour maybe, and then it's gone. But the idea of meditation, of continuously meditating every day is to learn how to do this constantly in your life, every second of your life be in a meditative state. So when you when you say that you are when you, you are aware of when you stand up, when you sit down, when you walk, you are completely aware. You're totally aware of what is happening inside your mind. You're totally aware of how you're responding. Um, when you're so so um, when you're talking about this, something that really needs mention is when you are having your food. How aware are we when we are eating? So the most of the people they go in front of the TV, they just you know grab anything that they get. And yeah, and you, we don't even have time to eat these days. We travel and while traveling, we get something to eat. And that is, that is a huge injustice that we do to our body because eating is, we are nourishing our body, right? So when we are doing that, there is a way to do that. So we Indians, we knew this very well. Um, so we had, we have this particular, um, what do you say, procedure for eating itself. So we sit down. Um, in, in a particular posture, we have, we eat, we have a leaf um, or a plate on the floor and we are, so when we are eating, uh, when we are having a, our food, there is a particular way to do it. And that's when you, you are completely aware of what the food is. You're completely aware of, um, you know, when you put it into your mouth, you're completely aware of the taste. You chew very slowly, you swallow very slowly. When you do that, your, the way the food gets digested is going to change. You are, you are doing a huge favor to your body when you are completely aware of the way you have your food. Um, so, so, this, um, so we consider all these to be unconscious processes, digestion, breathing, all these are unconscious process, processes for us. But, but the thing is we have um, the resources, we have the power to actually take control over all these. We actually, yes, mindful eating, Parvati is saying yes. 
so this is uh, that's what it is so mindfulness it's jo- not just about eating it's about everything that you do from uh, from the morning uh, till you go to sleep how nice it would be if you can actually be aware of every second this is what when you look at buddhist monks you can you can see the kind of peace and and happiness that, that they have you can you can see the way they walk the way they talk it means they are always completely in control if you go and shout at a buddhist monk you can already anticipate the way the person is going to respond they most probably wouldn't get angry because years of meditation would actually help you give up your ego itself so uh, yeah so yeah so that's what meditation does now okay let me see what else do i need to talk about okay yeah mind body mind body connection so we have a lot of researches um, in this area but we actually don't go deep into this for some reason mind body connection is a very real thing even the people who work out in the gym they know that every time you work out your a good trainer would tell you that you need to focus on your muscles if you actually want to see the change in your body that is because your body and your mind is is so connected they are not two separate entities the things that you that you uh, think um, the way that you think the way that you feel it completely affects the way that your body reacts and responds so now um, for uh, what do you say for a uh, proof to so this there are a lot of researches but there is one that actually really caught my attention and i'm going to explain that one research to you today um, in 2002 the mayo clinic they published a study that followed 447 people over a period of 20 years 30 years actually 30 years and they are showing so the the research is about showing that optimists are healthier than pessimists what 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 would your okay one second my device is going a little okay can you can you see me now can you see me now can you hear me now thank you so much guys all right so uh, this study they conducted and they said that optimists are definitely healthier they are healthier physically and mentally why does this happen and what is optimism for you can you put down in the chat box what optimism means to you can you just i just need one or two responses to go ahead please do that thinking positive okay um hope all right being positive yes that is exactly what yes being flexible yes yeah yeah amazing i'm so glad that a lot of responses are coming in expecting positivity in life yes staying positive yes amazing responses so how many of you know how to stay positive just put it in the chat box if you if you if you know how to be positive because we always say sridhar thank you sridhar says he knows uh i can be positive yes and it, and is it easy not always yeah yeah so everyone everyone says uh to stay positive stay positive how easy is that so when when you are going through when you're going through something terrible and someone comes to you and tells you that be positive you the only thing that you want to do is would be to give a tight slap on the face because that that is not how it works right so just being the, just saying that you need to stay positive is not going to work meditation on the other hand is actually going to help you do this so um, when i go into that i want to uh, talk about a few more things i don't know how many of you would have uh, being positive is very challenging yes so there is um, this book by dr joseph murphy the power of your subconscious mind i don't know how many of you have read it and um, you would know this book by the secret by ronda bain you would know that book because it's it's, it's a very famous book yeah so uh, this particular all these books actually talks about the law of attraction and how you need to be um, how you need to attract the things that you want in life but no none of them have actually explained how how you make that happen how you do that every day so here's the thing there is another person called dr joe uh, 
just one second. Dr. Joe Dispenza that I actually want everyone to go back and research on. He's on YouTube and you can you can find him online. There are a lot of amazing books by this person. He is a neuroscientist and he is the first. He probably is the first person who came in telling that this is how law of attraction is going to work for you. So that is he he conducts amazing researches in the field of uh, neuro science, uh, neurobiology, and um, so he actually tells about how meditation works. So we don't know how to think positive, right? But there are particular methods in meditation that makes it possible. So when you every day when you meditate, the way the outlook is going to change. Uh, someone is asking for the name. It's Dr. Joe Dispenza. Let me see if I can put it in the chat box. Okay, I'll just put it in the Dr. Joe Dispenza. Okay, if you can just if you just go on online and look for him, there are two amazing books. You are the placebo and becoming supernatural. So there are a lot of books. I think these two I absolutely love. So he he clearly explains how it works, how your brain waves are interacting with the universe continuously, and you are attracting the things that you want. So the the reason I talked about him is that just like you know, just like you know the secret, or you know Dr. Joseph Murphy, you uh, might not know the technology to do it. Um, you know that thinking positive would help, but how do you think positive when when life is life is bad to you? Um, so that is that's what you do through meditation. You gain awareness, uh, you gain perspective, and you learn to respond. Even when life around you, nothing changes around you. The moment you change from inside, you will you will see actual changes happening in your life. Okay, that much is clear. Perfect. Now there is another research that was conducted um, by the University of Yale. Six hundred and sixty people aged fifty and above they were followed for twenty years. And the research actually showed that the people who were positive and op optimistic and who were happy about the idea of getting growing old, they lived almost a decade longer than the other people. So, so this is the secret to longevity too. People are continuously looking for the elixir right, to, for, uh, for a long life. And this is it. So uh, when you have your mind in control, when you have your reactions and responses in control, um, then nothing that happens around the world is actually going to affect you. I'm not. I'm not saying that you would be. Uh, you would be superhuman, and uh, you know you can. Uh, you can actually fight everything in in a way. Actually, yes, because a lot of people haven't figured this out. A lot of people wouldn't know how to do this. But the moment you start meditating continuously, you will you will see these changes happening in your life. Okay, now. Um, Okay, and another thing that we need to focus on is neuroplasticity. A lot of researches are being um, conducted in this area. When you say neuroplasticity, so earlier we used to say that the brain that we got, that's it. After a point, this is not going to change. The brain that you got is the brain that you got. If you if you are dumb, you are dumb. If you are brilliant, you are brilliant. So so that is that is what we believed for a really long time. But now a lot of so this is the amazing thing about the the age that we are living in. Uh, this is the age of discoveries, and we are learning a lot of new things. So the that you are, you would be able to act. just give me one second. My screen has gone off. A lot of technical issues. Are you able to see me now? I'm really sorry about that. See, yeah, perfect. Okay, so um, the researches in neuroplasticity actually shows you that with enough attention and awareness, you would be able to change even the neural networks in your brain. So if you, if you go to Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, uh, he has, so uh, previously, so you know these uh, religious, uh, you, know, you would call it cults or the religious gatherings that actually do healing and all that. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard about that? Like people would get healed instantly, like that. A lot of it, a lot of that is uh, this sham. But in earlier days, there were a lot of people who were actually able to do it, and that was just by triggering uh, some responses in your own body. No one else is doing that, but you yourself. So you are the placebo. This is the book that actually talks about that. You have certain centers in your body that is capable of healing your body. So through meditation, you can activate these centers and you can, you can actually change 
very serious health problems too. Um, and there are there are evidences for this. I'm not just saying this. This is not pseudoscience. Uh, there are a lot of um, actual evidence uh, on this. There are a lot of uh, resources, um, researchers based on this. Now, okay. So the problem with uh, the, I wouldn't say the problem. The limitation that we have in India is that we don't have enough resources so when you say neuroplasticity a lot of these researches are happening in the west not in india because uh, we are still in a very nascent stage when it comes to mental health and psychology we don't have that kind of money and resources to put it into uh, researches right but when you but think about this where did meditation come from we are the people who who invented this i mean centuries back meditation emerged in india it's a part of yoga so we need to be very proud of it but the problem is we have completely lost it the west has taken over so if you go to west if you go to america if you go to us a lot of people are practicing yoga a lot of people are doing meditation but when when you talk to when you talk to people in india they would say meditation huh what is that i mean are you serious that is how people in india respond um so that is why we actually need to go online and treat these researches we need to actually understand what is happening around the world how people have taken something that we have given and made something amazing out of it right so that that's all actually i want to tell you today but before i conclude i want to take you through a small exercise so i want you to, i want you all to close your eyes sit very comfortably Close your eyes and take a very deep breath. Relax your body. Breathe in and breathe out very slowly. Breathe in, filling your lungs with air. And as you breathe out, allow the air to leave your body completely. Now, focus on the top of your head, your crown region. And imagine a very relaxing energy in the form of a blue light emerging from the top of your crown. Understand that you are in complete control of this energy. Now, you're slowly going to allow this energy to move to the rest of your body, relaxing your body. Just follow my voice. Allow this energy to spread to your forehead, relaxing your forehead muscles. Now allow this energy to move to your face muscles, your cheeks, relaxing your face muscles completely. Now let this energy move to your neck. Your neck can be a region where you hold a lot of your tension and stress. So spend some time there and slowly allow the tension to leave your body. Set an intention that you're going to release this tension. And every time you exhale, let this tension leave your neck. Now, let this energy spread to your shoulders, relaxing your shoulders completely. Let your shoulders fall free. From your shoulders, let this energy spread to the rest of your hand. From your shoulders to your elbows. your elbows to your wrist, relax your hands completely. Now focus on relaxing your upper body. Relax every muscle in your upper body. Allow all the tension to leave your body. You can focus on the center of your chest. and allow the tension to leave through this area. Now 
Now slowly, let this energy move through your lower body, relaxing your legs completely. From your hip to your knees. And from your knees to your ankles. Let your calf muscles relax. Let your feet relax. And from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, imagine yourself covered in this blue light. Letting your body relax completely. Now focus on the region where your body is most relaxed. Understand what this relaxation feels like. Let this area of relaxation grow and spread to the rest of your body, relaxing your entire body. Now that your body is relaxed, I want you to start creating a picture in your mind. Imagine that you're standing in the middle of a forest. There is a beautiful path right in the middle of this forest. It's not a scary forest. It's a very calm place. Imagine all the trees around you. Can hear the birds chirping. You can slowly walk through this path. When you look around, you can see a beautiful bird sitting on a tree. Give it all the colors that you want. Now slowly walk. And as you're walking, in the distance you can see a peacock. And it's taking small steps towards you. Not coming very close to you. You can see it dancing, spreading all its feathers. You can see the blue neck and all the beautiful colors on its feathers glistening. You're walking further down this path. You reach a clearing. When you reach there, you see the most beautiful sight that you have ever seen in your life. It's a meadow that is filled with flowers. Imagine all your favorite flowers there. There's a very light breeze. It's very comfortable and pleasant. Slowly walking in this meadow. And right there, in the center of the meadow, you see a waterfall. It's a beautiful waterfall. You go and stand in front of it. The mountain around the waterfall is covered with red flowers. So imagine the scene. The mountains were filled with red flowers and this white waterfall right in the center of it. Stand there for a few seconds. You can find a tree nearby. You can sit down, rest comfortably. And let all your stress and tension go. Allow yourself to relax in this beautiful place. Now imagine the emotion of love filling your body. If it's difficult to imagine, you can think of the people that you love the most in this world. Try to imagine how that feels. Imagine that love emerging from the center of your heart and it's spreading to the rest of your body. Now the same way, you are going to fill your body with happiness. Imagine an instant where you are absolutely happy. 
Let that feeling take over. And spread to the rest of your body. Absolute happiness. Take a few more seconds. And I count to three. I want you to be fully awake and alert. One. Take a deep breath in. Slowly breathe out. Two. Breathe in. Breathe out. Three. You can open your eyes now. Okay. Perfect. Please put in the chat box how you felt. If um, any of you want to unmute and talk to me, please do that. Okay, um, I'm so glad that I'm, I'm hoping that a lot of people could actually enjoy it. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, so this is, this is just the beginning of, so when we do guided imagery every day, you can actually find a lot of guided imagery on YouTube. So when you um, do that every day, you you slowly allow your body to to sit still for a long period of time if you are a beginner in meditation this will actually help you to bring your body in control and then later on there are a lot of further stages of meditation this is just the beginning of it i just wanted to give you like a what do you call that a starter pack so perfect in the last two three minutes i slept and that's completely okay <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah a lot of people use guided imagery to fall asleep and uh, that is that, that's a really good way to fall asleep too you can actually find a lot of sleep meditations on youtube too so i am so happy that i could do this with you guys today i'm also doing a lot of meditation sessions so if you want to like uh, reach out to me personally you can do that you can get my contact from Suresa probably so this has been oh, just one second my network is bad can you guys can you guys hear me still yes yes we can ever hear you. okay thank you so thank you guys. Guys. thank you so much this was, yes. this was amazing for me i hope it actually uh, brought in some good inputs for you too no, thank, you lot. thank you Suresh, sir, for giving me this opportunity and thank you everyone for, for staying on patiently and uh, responding. Thank you we'll take, we'll so take a few on days, Susan. And now I request Dr. Chandra to take over. I can't hear you. Suresh, I can't hear you. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe you have technical issues from there, from your side, I think. I'll type it. Just give me one second. Okay, let me try and put on my... Um, Oh, hello. Yeah, we can able to hear you. We can able to hear you. I still can't. It's long time. Again. Time to talk. She's not able to hear, sir. I think it's a problem with my audio. Okay. Okay. Uh, dear participant, if you have any questions related to present uh, the today's session, you can uh, put your uh, question in the chat box. Three of your questions will be answered. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, maybe have you logged in the two devices? If it is so, then there will be a problem. You switch off one device. Okay, perfect. Okay. Can able to hear you? Yes, now I can. Yeah, now, now I can hear yes, really yes. sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there is a question from Bama yes. Devi. Yeah, if you can read the chat box or else if you want to unmute, please let me know. I will unmute you. Yes. There are many, many positive feedback. Thank you for that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Devi Raman, Jodhi uh, Sir, Sindhil. Uh, Trying to look at the chat box. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, are there are there questions? Yes, yes. Some, 
Uh, uh, will, they, will they be putting the questions in the chat box? Yes, it is there. One question is there. Can I read it for you? Can you? Yes, begin? please. Yes, yes. I have. Okay. Is it from Tamil Selvan? Yes, yes, Tamil Selvan. I'm not able to concentrate on uh, my breathing. Okay. That that. What kind of meditation do you do, Tamil Selvan? You can put it in the chat box. Yeah, maybe. Can anyone would you like to speak, please let me know. I will unmute you. You can talk to the speaker now. Okay, watching watching your breath. Okay, that is um okay. Maybe you should so here's the thing. Uh, dear participant, you can unmute now. If you want to speak to a speaker, you can unmute by yourself. Hello, madam. Yes. So madam, I am Tamil Chalun, madam. Hi, hi. Yeah, uh, tell me. Hi, madam. Madam, actually I used to do watching my breathing, madam. Um, okay. Okay. Are you uh, guided some... by someone to do this? Ah, yes, madam. Mm. Uh, I watched some YouTube videos, madam. Through ah. that, uh, I am doing that, madam. Actually, so I attended some yoga program also, madam. In that program also, they told you like me to watch your breath, no? Ah, uh, yes, madam. Okay. So in that case, uh, what I usually suggest for people who come for meditation sessions is always start with guided meditation. Because uh, once you start doing that, you actually unlock a lot of parts of your consciousness. And uh, then you are, you are actually able to concentrate on a lot of things. And from there, you can go to the next level. So the, the thing is, um, meditation works differently, completely differently for different people. Something that would work for one person wouldn't work for another person. So if we are trying to do the same kind of meditation, uh, everyone, it wouldn't work. So you have to try and um, try and experiment what all works for you. And try and start with guided imagery always because focusing or concentrating, it actually comes um, after a, a level of practice, right? So when you do guided imagery, you actually have something to focus on and you do that and you are able to focus on something uh, that is so visual because visual and auditory works better instead of focusing on your breath. So when you continuously do that for a long period of time, then you will know that you are ready to go to a different level of meditation. Then you can try and start doing, you know, watching your breath and all that because it's not easy to start with that. Your your thoughts would be so distracting. But when you are, and also I would suggest you to do it um, continuously, not do, just during the meditation, uh, while you are doing something on the day, just take a few seconds, take a few uh, small break. And, and look at how you are breathing. Don't try to change anything. Don't try to change the style of your breathing, nothing. Just focus on how you are breathing. Okay, uh, Tamil Selvan? Ah, yes, madam. Yeah, okay. I, hope, I hope that would work for you. If not, you can, you, you can uh, contact me personally also and uh, we will talk about it. Okay. okay. Thank Is you. there any other question? Thank you so much. Uh, okay, I think there are a few. Guided meditation also, there are a lot of type of videos. Where to start with, ma'am? Okay, that is, a, that is a good question because finding a U video on YouTube can be a little um, hard. So I, um, I started with Isha Kriya, Sadhguru's. So that uh, is something that I was doing. That is one kind of guided uh, meditation. It's not visual imagery. Uh, visual imagery, I don't like any of the videos that is on YouTube. I do uh, visual imagery sessions. Um, so if anyone is interested, like I said, you can contact me or you can try different kinds of visual imagery that is on YouTube and um, try one, um, try a different one every day. And you will one day you will finally find something that clicks with you that uh, that actually works for you. Okay, so uh, why I do what I do differently is I, I personalize it for people. I, I, try to, I try and understand what a, each person likes. So some people would like night, some people would like morning and for water body, some some person would like ponds and lake, some other would like sea and river. So that is why I personalize uh, the visual imagery for every person so that uh, it becomes a very personal experience and then you are actually able to focus. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, it's a uh, question, ma'am. Yes. Hi, ma'am. Hi. 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 Hi.
உடலில் ஒரு <laughs> that create very specific imagery so so uh, what kind of future are you looking for what what would be the the perfect picture to describe that can no, you can you actually, yeah no 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 actually i thinking uh, i will be said uh, i build a building like that i will be happy with that i need a swimming pool like that i just uh, i image yeah. whatever i yeah. need i materialistic and also i thought my um, kids uh, grow, grow growing of my kids like that also yeah yeah no materialistically is, that is good that that is what we we actually need pictures right so when you are doing that focus on your emotions more so ju- not just the pictures like imagine how you would feel so when you are sitting in front of that pool when you are relaxed imagine all the emotions that you would feel then and um, when you do that so initially it is going to be difficult because there are a lot of um, you know this uh, this negative um, your negative quotes are going to come into play and it's going to tell you that you know this is not going to work um so then it becomes very difficult and then your mind goes into a conflict and that's why you are you are you are stressed while you are meditating that is why you are getting headaches while you are doing that yeah yeah i'm thinking yeah. positive if i thought mm, uh, yeah. uh, um uh, i will play in swing like that i th- think also some mm. uh, if this th- swing will be possible for a uh, for our roof like that uh, yeah, some, uh, yeah. something is coming so i'm uh, i'm trying to come to my imagination mm. so it's a struggle for okay. me to come i'll give you a tip it. okay i'll give you a tip just um, take out the idea that you this is something that you want okay, okay? completely forget that this is something that you want just just think of it like this this is something that you are doing to escape your reality okay 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 and when you when you think that this is something that you want that is when your negative thoughts are coming into play forget that okay. and just and just think that okay this is an aspect that i'm going to create for myself today whether it happens or doesn't happen doesn't matter but i am going to enjoy the scene com- completely even if i'm not going to get a swimming po- pool in real life that's okay but right this at uh, this moment i'm sitting there and i'm going to enjoy that completely okay 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 yeah okay ma'am thank you thank you ma'am great uh thank you uh, sona it is an amazing presentation today i'm um, really proud to have your session now um it's my brief feedback about it was 
really wonderful session even i to as i said in the beginning itself as a teacher i taught you but now i learned from you thank you so much for the learning of today now i request dr subhashree ma'am she is our co team member to place the word of thanks for today's session co team ma'am thank you dr suresh uh, thank you sona it was a wonderful session and uh, also uh, gave lot of clarity for the mindfulness practice and i really appreciate the way you interacted with the people and uh, you involved them into the entire process i visualize also uh, i i do mindfulness meditation regularly so i could actually connect very well mm. and uh, and i also know the uh, you know i also could feel the uh, the you know the change or the transformation if one regularly does the mindfulness practices uh thank you so much and uh, you were uh, you were able to connect the uh, you know the concepts and as well as the practical tips you have given for them that was the wonderful thing i really admire that and you are also so bubbly in conducting the session i am really happy for that and uh, and all the all the very best uh, seeing the youngsters doing very well we all really feel very proud and this platform is making so many people to come out and share their uh, talents we are actually you know in tamil we call it as indra porudum porudirukum tanmagane sanron ena ketatai it's all we all feel proud that uh, our own children our own uh, you know students are getting into the limelight so happy for that um, if you are suresh student probably yeah. you are also my yeah. student like so okay uh, with uh, no Accept our gratitude from the core team members who have been, uh, you know, behind from the April fourteenth onwards. Uh, you know, the day twenty twenty as announced as lockdown and other aspects. We are actually freaking out in the mental health webinar series the day onwards. So I am thankful to Dr. Suresh for organizing such a. You know, he had a vision for such a kind of a plan, and he is the brainchild behind this entire mental mental health webinar series. And we have a very committed team members who have been working uh, throughout. You know, even somebody is not present, somebody is present. It doesn't mean somebody is there to take care of the the torch to move on. Like a you no know, sportsman spirit, we are moving on. and uh, i really thank for the core team member for the continuous support and uh, you know the beautiful coordination they all show towards us and i really thank the participants who have been traveling with us throughout this series and uh, i've seen many of our participants are uh, continuous participants that right from the day one we have certain people over here and they all really made us they are the motivation behind all of us to run like this and uh, it is not at all possible we cannot uh, have an energy to run like this only they are supplying energy like a solar system and we are we are able to keep this running and i really thank all the coordinators and collaborators also in this uh, forum they have been so wonderful that they are also netting up with all the resource pooling and for us uh, towards this you know conduction of the seminar and i really thank from the department of psychology american college madurai uh, the head of the department suresh uh, he is the lead for us and then the entire other collaborators from madras school of social work chennai and also the you uh, know psycho oncology turkey and also uh, ms chellamuthu educational and rehabilitation trust from madurai and we have so many other collaborators who are really willing to and uh, a uh, well being center from chennai uh, and uh, there are so many other aspects we have, would like to mention but elo pond which we all are connected netted together and elo pond for the technical support and thank you so much sona for the wonderful session mm -hmm. and uh, I, all the best for your budding you know i i could see the budding psychologist you know propping up with a lot of colors mm -hmm. Thank you a lot. I'm really glad to be uh, to have been able to do this and to be a part of this. And I love the work that you're doing. And I see that every day you're coming up with a new topic and all that. I'm so grateful that you're able to do this during this difficult time. So thanks a lot to all of you, to the entire team, and thank you so much, Suresh, sir, for giving thank me this. Thank you, Swarna. Thank you, Sona. And thank you all. We'll meet another session. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah.